Hi, welcome to this video on cyborg and the possibility of altering humans into part machines. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better, more sustainable world, so please do subscribe to our channel. It is no coincidence that the golden age of comic books corresponded with the technological revolution and the age of space exploration. There was an explosion of ideas on what we can do with the emerging technologies. Among them was the very profound idea of amalgamating human body with machines. This concept went beyond exoskeleton for armor and prosthetics for amputees and the disabled. In fact, it ventured into enhancing humans through machines. Hence, many views of not just androids or human-shaped robots emerged in the golden era of comic books, but also the concept of cyborgs that had both organic and biomechatronic body parts, or in other words, part human and part machines, that is, machines that could operate with the human tissue present. Today, we have numerous characters in the comics world based on this concept. In the 1980s, such was the popularity of cyborgs that they came out of the comic books and made it into many mainstream movies that included The Terminator and Robocop. Children's cartoons like Bionic 6 and Centurions also encapsulated the idea. Likewise, androids enthralled audience with programs like Transformers. Part of the fascination of the concept of cyborg is rooted in the fact that humans are trying to create life, be it artificial, in the image of themselves. In fiction, one of the first known literature to introduce this concept would be Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Most recently, the Justice League movie also featured the cyborg character. So it is worthwhile exploring that with the technology available today, to what extent can humans integrate with the machines? We are all aware that advanced prosthetic limbs exist that can be controlled by the electrical signal sent by the brain through the nerves. The nerve endings can be connected to an interface called the electromyography sensor that picks up the electrical signals and sends it to a computer that turns it into motor input signal. And that in turn moves the arm. So, we have already seen how the brain signals can be utilized to control machines. Another great example of this would be mind-controlled cars that have already been produced and demonstrated. The driver wears a headset with 16 sensors that read the EEG signals in the driver's brain and translates them into instructions for the drivetrain via software. So, machines can be controlled by mind, but what about the feedback to the brain? The neurons can send signal two ways. Can the prosthetic limb send the signals to the brain about how hard or soft the material is that it is trying to hold, let's say? The answer is yes. Through nanotechnology, it is possible today to develop a layer or skin of sensors on the prosthetic limb that can send signal back to the brain. This technology is fairly expensive and the relative advantage of having these feedback sensors is not high enough for commercial funding. This brings us to the next question. How does non-organic material interact with the human body once it is integrated with it? The answer to this question has opened up a whole new field of biocompatibility. We are already aware that apples are rich in iron and we eat them. Food in different parts of the world is sometimes covered with ultra-thin layer of silver foil and is also edible. There are certain materials including metals that our body can accept. On the other hand, there are materials that are toxic to the human body. Mercury and other heavy metals are an example of that. Gold and silver have been known from ancient times to be biocompatible and therefore were used in medicine. Fortunately, this field of biocompatibility has allowed us to explore materials that can be safely used as implants. Today, we have many grades of polymers that are biocompatible. Silicon and metallic bone implants are also commonly used in medical procedures. We are now living in an era where stem cell research has allowed us to grow muscles 
in the labs. Cultured meat is being sold commercially. Genetic engineering has progressed leaps and bounds to a level where we are now looking to regrow body organs that may need a replacement. On one hand, we have already developed biological computers that use biological materials such as DNA and proteins to perform computational calculations involving storing, retrieving, and processing of data. On the other hand, we have computers now that can mimic the human brain with light beams for neurons. These two related technologies are almost reciprocal of each other, but their synergy has been made possible through the new emerging science of nanobiotechnology. The development of computer chip brain implants is already underway. Likewise, scientists are looking into regenerating the brain in the lab or part of it to restore brain function after tumor removal. We have certainly reached a point in history where the idea of part machine and part human is being realized before our very eyes. We should be careful in treading forward. The perils of artificial intelligence are often discussed. The scenario of achieving technological singularity has been the subject of many movies where mankind has been pitted against the machines. Technology that we don't often fully understand can lead to disastrous consequences. If the world pool all its resources, yes, cyborg could be a reality in the next 10 years. But should it be? That is the more important question. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. Please give us a thumbs up if you liked it. We will endeavor to bring you more such videos in the future. Subscribe now so not to miss any of them. We have many more videos on learning science through comic books. Do check out the whole series. Once again, thank you for your attention.